We're here to talk about managing social media for your charities. And so we thought we'd do something rather different because we're firstly a very small group and we are talking about social media and interaction. So our panelists are actually seated among you. So over on my left, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm uh, Hui Kang from Citigate New Rogerson, a public relations consultancy. Nice to meet you. Now, we also have Patrick Narvin in the audience. Where have you disappeared? There he is. Yep, hi. I'm the guy everyone wa wants to speak to. <laughs> uh, but because you're such a charitable audience here today, um, I'm sure it'll be a quite a pleasant experience. I look forward to talking to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Give him a big hand. Patrick Narvin from SMRT. And uh, Jeannie Ong is still ex uh, exchanging name cards. But Jeannie, when you have a moment, would you mind joining our panel? Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Jeannie, Chief Strategic Partnership Officer of StarHub. But I wear many hats in StarHub. Uh, so uh, ignore the title. I'm just, I'm, I'm just uh, somebody who works for StarHub for many years and happy to be here today to share our experiences with you. And isn't it cool that we are seated among the audience today? Yes, isn't that much better? Thank you, Jeannie. So, obviously, we're here to answer your questions and meet your needs. So let's get started, firstly, by a quick show of hands of what you are actually here for. Have you already launched your charities or IPC's Twitter hand, a Twitter feed or, or Facebook page? Do you have a social media presence? Please raise your hand. Okay. Raise your hand if you currently do not, and that's the reason you're here. And what about the rest of you? Raise your hands if you're just here because you don't want to be in the whistle blowing. <laughs> uh, okay, so obviously a lot, quite a number of you already have a, a, a page or a, or a feed, but you're still here presumably because you want to learn more about it. Is that the reason? Just a quick nod, a quick show of hands. Who here has had some social media disasters and that they'd really like some guidance on? Don't be shy, we won't put your name on the PowerPoint. No, no disasters. Okay. So out of those who said that, yes, you're here because you want to know more about how to manage your, your channel, what is your biggest issue that you want to manage? I Silence? Yeah. Silence on the social media channel is a problem. Um, I think for us, it's just, you know, that there are so many guidelines right now from the government also that we don't want to put ourselves out there in such a way that while we are promoting ourselves, we're actually shooting ourselves in the foot. Yeah. Yes, indeed. You? Um, reaching out to more people, how to get our posts to like have a wider reach. Because clearly you can't just have, you know, tweet something and then 13 people see it, right? You want to have wider reach. Before you take that sip, <laughs> what is your reason for being here? Skip from that. Yeah, I think um, in today's, uh, today's uh, age, whereby, you know, before, before as a senior management, before things come to me, sometimes, you know, I get to see them in the media first. You know, for example, uh, I was sharing with somebody earlier that uh, at one, po one point in time when I saw on uh, Google, uh, no, uh, Yahoo, Yahoo News, uh, there's a fire in my building. And uh, immediately I call our investor relation, corporate communication. I say, what happened? And the answer I was given was, the fire was put out in less than 10 minutes, but you see, we need to manage the media. You read it online before you found out about the fire in your <laughs> building. So nobody actually hit the fire alarm, presumably. Uh, well, it was a very small accident, and it was a very small matter, in fact, but it was just being blown up. Somebody took a video and put it on to online, and um, like I said, it's in fact a very small matter. And uh, that is where I said, you know, we need to manage the media. So obviously that wasn't uh, the fire at Terminal 2. That's not your building, I assume. <laughs> right. Okay. You also put your hand up. What are you here for, Jonathan? Well, uh, engagement strategy. 
yeah what what can i uh, publish and on uh, making making use of the resources i have or the resources i do not have how do i um, really write the content that can best engage but um, i come from a, a home for protected children so there are some things i cannot publish as well yes. so what do i do very good Jeannie. would you like to ask the the people on your panel on your table right i have a um a bunch of very interesting characters here. We've got people from the Singapore Women's Association, people from AWWA, and uh, we have a head of Copcoms from Centurion. So why don't you tell us, David, what's your objective of being here today? Okay. Um, Centurion? And Mark, I'm getting a cut of whatever they're paying you. <laughs> I work for free, so uh, the check for zero coming your way. The cut of free is good too. <laughs> well, uh, Centurion uh, is among others in the business of student accommodation. So, so we have uh, the dual student living hostels in the UK, Australia, Singapore. We have our uh, social media on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and, and, uh, and even WeChat, Weibo. Uh, a lot of our residents are students from China studying in the UK, for example. But our residents don't like to engage us on our uh, social media. They prefer to start up their own little chat groups and, and platforms or across the media. So I'm very keen to learn how we can engage better with them, whether on our official social media or how we can be a part of their own little groups without you know, being intrusive. Mm. Okay, mm. lesson number one about the social media, keep it brief. Uh, but actually that's well explained. And Patrick, maybe you can kick off this conversation because after all, um, the conversations are probably already taking place about you, about your charity. The question isn't so much how do you start the conversation, but how do you join it? And uh, Patrick, because your organization is so uncontroversial and nobody ever talks about it, <coughs> would you like to uh, maybe get started about how you manage the conversation beyond your own social media page? Well, I think to start with, you have your own social media space and in the case of SMRT, let me just stand up. Huh? In the case of SMRT, it's our own Facebook, uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram. Uh, but it's important for us, I'll just take a step back, uh, Mark. I'll, it's important for us to be aware of what's happening uh, across social media. So media monitoring is something that we do and we do religiously. Um, so I know every single day what's being said about SMRT and about the industry in general across all media, social media platforms and of course by traditional media platforms too. And don't forget today, traditional media has got several uh, different manifestations. Uh. Straits Times, Chao Pao, uh, CNA, they also have an online presence and they also have a Facebook presence. So they are present in many different ways. Okay, so traditional media and social media, the lines are being blurred, one bleed into each other. You know? um, <clears throat> so what I do is maintain a presence in my own platforms. Uh, as I said, uh, our, our Facebook, Twitter, um, <clears throat> Instagram, we also have our own blog, our website and so on. I need to know what is happening elsewhere in the rest of the world. I take it as a, own po a policy or strategy that I don't go and engage in someone else's space, even though it, comments may be made about SMRT. Um, for a company like SMRT, Frontline Public Service, we do get a lot of hits every day. And there are certain, zo uh, well, certain places which are actually very toxic. So when, if you go there as SMRT, you're asking for trouble, frankly. So what is the strategy we do take is to talk about it in our own space, but we hope that there are advocates out there. And uh, we don't have a policy of generating advocacy, eh? but there are staff that will come to me. I've got 10,500 people working in SMRT. They come to me and ask me, hey, I see these things that really piss me off in social media. I said, go ahead. But be aware of what is social media etiquette. Okay, how do you respond? As staff, I encourage you, okay, but be aware of what you need to say and how you say it, and always 
go there uh, and be prepared to say that you are staff of SMRT. Okay, good. That's, that's good. That gives us a lot to work with already. Hui Kang, uh, over there on the right-hand side of the room. Uh, social media monitoring. What sort of tools do you use? And feel free to be specific unless you are collecting a commission from recommending them. I think there are various ways uh, to, to monitor. Um, for my firm, we represent a lot of um, SMEs, you know, and I, and I think similar to charities at large, you know, we all face budget constraints, right? So not all of us will have the budgets, you know, that uh, the large corporations have uh, to have, uh, you know, very extensive social media monitoring tools, right? So then, you know, it's, it's a matter of um, working smart, right, with a limited budget. So, um, and, uh, and the social media, and I think, you know, uh, uh, we, we will all have colleagues and teams, you know, uh, who are very who are familiar and active social media users? As uh, Patrick has pointed out, you know, uh, uh, you know, we uh, we will encourage our clients and ourselves as well to monitor uh, the various uh, uh, social media platforms. How? Of, uh, key how, how sorry, sorry to pin you down, but how are you doing that? Are you using TweetDeck, Hootsuite? Are you d using Google News Alerts? How how are you actually doing the monitoring? Um, various the across the various platforms. I think Google Alerts it's the one of the easiest. Right, and, and that's free, right? Then, uh, and also um, uh, for the very simple fact of uh, being part of uh, the various uh, uh, platforms and groups. For example, if you're on Twitter, right? Then, you know, you monitor uh, the various uh, Twitter names and handles. How? You know, so you're in relevant. Twitter and you, you install a search? Uh, and you yes. go to that search daily? Is that how it yes, works? Yes, that's right. So we have a search, we have keywords that we would monitor. Uh, and uh, put out on uh, the alerts. And, uh, and you monitor them how often? Um, with social media, right. It used to be the print, you read the papers every morning. But with social media, the frequency of those alerts have to be stepped up. You know, so uh, um, depending on uh, um, the team's resources, I think uh, every uh, four hours, right. Or some of us uh, might do it uh, perhaps uh, about two to three times a day. Right. Four hours, okay. Quick show of hands. Who here has dedicated social media team in your charity? Who here is the social media person for your charity? And keep your hands up for a minute. Keep your hands up. So you are the ones who are tweeting and, and posting to Facebook. Are you also the chief executive, chief financial officer, and HR person all rolled into one? What sort of person do we need to have um, Hui Kang, in the team, what is the ideal sort of person who you might be able to delegate this to for that two or three times a day task? I think ideally, right, um, it uh, should be someone who's an active user of uh, social media platforms, right? And uh, like uh, one, of my, um, one of my former uh, bosses at, uh, at Channel News Asia, you know, used to say when he was setting up his digital team, no one in the team, right, should be more than 35 years old. <laughs> More than 45 years 35. old? 35. 35. Right. Because, right, you know, our colleagues, you know, of that age group live, breathe, you know, social media, right? So they are much more alert and uh, in tune, you know, with all the various latest social media trends. In fact, for me, I work closely with my younger colleagues, you know, who will be able to bring to our attention certain trends, you know, that are, that are out there. And then, you know, we can have a discussion on how to tackle them. Cool, thank you for that. Jeannie, if I could tear you away from the phone for just a moment, because you're probably live tweeting about our conversation, I bet. Um, Patrick mentioned a very interesting point, and that is joining other people's conversations. Clearly, that's difficult. It, it probably seems a bit disingenuous if you leap in on somebody's criticism of SMRT. But what if somebody pays a compliment? What if the conversation is actually a very positive one? Do you at Starhub uh, take proactive uh, steps to then join that conversation, maybe thank them for their comments? Or, or how do you deal with those? Uh, right, those sort I'll, of I'll come to your question later, but let's uh, talk about Patrick. Uh, before that, how many of you are customers of SMRT? Hands up. Stay there, stay there, because we have a bet here. How many of you are Starhub customer? Okay. It's almost the same amount, Jeannie. You've lost the bet. Right, okay, I'm um, sorry, don't mean to be rude, but very hard to talk like that, okay. Uh, we have a team of 10 people uh, in the social media team, and Hui King is right, they're all very young, they bring down the average age of Star Harbors. So, 
the team of 10, you know, they will do a lot of um, social media monitoring. The team actually does two, two things mainly. One is what I call the social campaign. So when we launch campaign, they will work with the product and the marketing people and push out contents, you know, like for example, Facebook Live, if we want to do anything to promote certain uh, marketing campaigns that we have. They also do community management. That means they are the one who will manage all the social media talks and they are the one who will reply. And they work very closely with the Cotcoms team uh, in answering all those questions. Because somebody in front early on mentioned about, you know, um, landmine if you answer wrongly, right? And more importantly, lately, we have done something which I was going to say in uh, contrary to what Patrick said. We, we have a team, uh, the same team, social media monitoring. We also have added a couple more staff to do social listening. Okay, so the social listening team, what they do uh, is they listen to conversation um, by, by, you know, netizens, not only on our social media platform, uh, but also, you know, when they discuss and talk about it in their Facebook, so long as it's not a private one, you know. And we actually also, uh, for the last one year, set up a social analytics lab called Curiosity. And because that is a commercial thing, we actually have corporate customers who subscribe, who buy our service. So I'm not at liberty to tell you what we use unless you want to use our service to help you. But they actually have tools and they're able to listen to conversation. So because sometimes when you want to gripe about SMRT or Starhub, you do it maybe openly or you do it among your team of people. And then you might think that we, we, do, we do not know, but we do know, okay? You'd be amazed at how much information the telco knows about you, okay? So, of course, we are also privy to the fact that there's PDPA, uh, so we have to be mindful of all this data. So you are just one data point among the millions of customers that we have. Uh, so don't have to worry about you know, us knowing you, that you, you know, how old, what, what gender and stuff like that. It will be you know, just anonymized in that sense. But the idea is we do a lot of social listening because that is important in order for us to do a lot of proactive messaging in order for us to push content to our customers. Okay, and that's great for StarHub, a multi-billion dollar company with a team of 10. If you didn't, Jeannie, for the charities in this room, for, as I said, you know, the social media is probably on somebody else's desk at the same sure, time. Sure. What is the, and we can't afford curiosity, so what is it that you can do in your experience? I, I would say you should still set up a social media team. And by the way, it doesn't mean that you're a big cap company, you know, you need to ha have more people, more hands and legs. Yesterday when I was speaking at one forum, there was one panelist who came from Vietnam and they have 1,000 people working on sustainability report. And I'm like, I only have one person in the whole startup doing sustainability report. So it doesn't mean that you're a big cap company, you know, you are a multi-billion company, you, you, you need to have a, a big army of people helping you. So back to charity. Uh, important thing is, uh, Hui King is right, get somebody at the right age group to help you, okay? Certainly not Patrick Hui King or myself, somebody much younger who live, breathe, eat, sleep social media, okay? Because they really need to be on hopefully start up, you know, data network, uh, to chat and to monitor and to also listen in. The only good thing is that because charity is unlike service industry like SMRT and Starhub, whereby people will gripe about our services. I don't, I don't see people griping about AWWA, about Women's Association and all that. You, you know what I mean? So because of that, there is a less crucial need for you to really... Uh, do it fast, do it quick. Whereas for us, you know, we get tweets and we get bombarded every second in that sense. I'm sure right now as we're in this room, people are tweeting about SMRT late or delay or whatever. So the, the, the real need, you know, the challenges for a corporate, it's different from the challenges of the charity. Cool. So, so the starting point is you have to listen, but you probably won't find too much out there at the moment. So it's a starting point, but it's obviously not the be all and end all. There are tools that you can use which are cheap or free, and at least that way you have an idea of what's already being talked about. Because as Sir Hui Kang, you're about to tell us, I'm certain, social media is actually more about listening, not so much about pushing content. Would you agree? Could you elaborate on that point, please? 
Absolutely, because a lot of times, you know, uh, in the first place, do we have that much content right, to push out? I'm sure all of us will have faced uh, challenges in that. So it's a, it's a lot about uh, listening, about uh, what people are talking about you. If not about you, then you, know, you could broaden it to include your peers, right? so that uh, we also are in tune with um, views and uh, uh, comments on them. Right? And uh, there are actually a lot of lessons that we can learn and draw. You know, uh, from our from our peers, right? And we can learn from uh, each other. So um, this uh, listening is um, important, right? Depending on uh, how active the space that uh, you are in, you might want to ask your team, you know, to put together a, a daily report, or even every other day, or every other, or every week for that matter. And uh, uh, you know, as uh, resources are a tight issue, we may not have someone you know that we can delegate to fully look at social media. So one idea you know we could explore is you know to set up a team, right? And uh, uh, they could all be from various departments, you know, to assign uh, them so that uh, they work together, and and all of them will have their own portfolios and perspectives, and uh, they will be uh, 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 in tune with uh, the various topical issues in their areas. And I think together. You know, you could pull together a meaningful uh, a monitoring report to let you have a sense of uh, what's uh, being spoken about you out there. Perfect, because that leads us into the first of our exercises this afternoon. That's right, you thought you could just sit and play on your phones. I'm going to get you to do some work. You now have five minutes in clusters of tables, which I'll point out, to do some of exactly that listening that Hui Kang just talked about. Listen to each other first about some of the problems that you yourself highlighted you have with social media. On this table over here, plus that one, this one, and this one, I want you, just around the yourselves in this table, to talk about what you can do to delegate the social media listening. Because we already know that you don't have budgets. You don't even have budgets for HR people, as we discussed in the morning. So let alone for social media teams. Am I right? So what can you do? Please come up with some solutions. Uh, table number one, did I point to you earlier? I'm already losing track. One, two, three, four. And in five minutes from now, don't start yet, huh? In five minutes from now, we'll come back to your answers. On this table here, you have a, the benefit of a PR professional on your table. But anyway, plus this table and this table, I would like you to discuss what tools you're going to use, what channels you're going to use to at least start to get a sense of what people are saying. And by the way, it's not just about your charity. It's about your area of expertise. For example, Jonathan, I think you said you were in the children's, children's right? So you're not just going to do a Google News Alert on you, the name of your charity. You're going to do it on the topic, right? So think about what you can do, these three tables, that these tables are discussing for who is going to do it, right? So you're going to discuss the tools. Any questions so far? This, these three tables here, one, two, and three. Did I miss any table? <laughs> Good. These three tables here. Can you please, these four tables, can you please, just amongst yourselves, discuss what you can do to influence those conversations? So we already heard Patrick say that he doesn't want to join other people's conversations. But come up with some ideas for, you know, if the Google News Alerts found out that actually you, people are talking about you, how can you join that conversation? How can you influence the conversation? How can you shape the discussion? And then we have uh, a couple more tables at the back. Table one, two, and three, I want you to talk about content. And not just, yes, we're going to take photos at our charity dinner. What sort of meaningful, relevant, valuable, shareable, exciting content can you create for your charities? And then these final two tables over here are going to address that question that we had earlier. How do we get more hits? How do we go beyond? How do we not just post you know, a video on YouTube and then we get 20 hits and that's all? What can you do in order to increase the reach and distribution? Your five minutes starts now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the time is up. Time is up. Uh, let's, leave the, uh, the networking. let's leave the networking to the coffee break and start to get some answers from you. Ladies and gentlemen, time's up. Your 140 characters are over. Just uh, let's, let's take a listen to what each of these tables has come up with. Remember, the idea is to do our own social listening today.
The idea is to come up with your own ideas and for, for us to, to crowdsource those and share those around. And who knows, you might come away with hugely significant ideas. Let's start with this table over here. Can you please tell me firstly what the topic was that you addressed and what were the ideas that you came up with? Please stand up. Don't be shy, come. Okay, everybody, please pay attention because she's really shy. She wants lots of people looking at her. Okay. Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm actually from the Philippines, so I might be the only internal audit person in the, in the room. But um, what we were assigned was how do you delegate social listening? So what I shared with the team is that we actually have different platforms and our investor relations and corporate communications group and marketing group contribute to that one. But in terms of uh, social listening, it's actually delegated to everyone in the organization because we have what we call malasakit or care for the organization. And so if we see something that we believe we should respond to or take back to the organization, we have identified specific people who should respond to specific um, issues like if it's regulated or if it's a regulatory environment, this is the only person who can respond to that. If it's customer facing, this is the only person. So we have to ensure consistency in our messaging. Very good. Wow. So instead of having a team, you actually said everybody's part of the team. Isn't that interesting? Now all of a sudden this starts to become manageable. As I go to the next table, you can't say yes exactly what they said. Okay, you have to come up with fresh ideas. So. Oh, for that. <laughs> Find a volunteer. Advertise for someone to do the social listening for you who's younger than me. Okay. So younger than 25. Okay. What about on this table here? What, what did you guys come up with? Texting my colleagues to ask the question. She's texting her colleagues. What did you come up with? <laughs> I'm only 25 years old, so I can answer the question. <laughs> Serious answer? No, okay. no, no, so I'm saying I was telling them, because I'm not into charity, I also run a PR company, so we deal a lot with um, crises and all that. So for, for charity, they should ask themselves if there is negative comments about your organization with regarding to an issue or a practice, where do you think such comments will be articulated? you should start looking at these kind of sites, blog sites or websites or social media sites. So for example, if um, we talk about mobile phones, if there is a defect, I, I can guarantee you there will be hundreds of comments in hardware zone about that particular phone, you know? So you should be looking for such sites to be tracking, each drop on them, then you get an idea what they are talking about, your, your organization, and then you better have a strategy to counter or take actions. Okay, and that is another issue. Okay, okay and we'll have another table to talk about that. So, so, so far we've heard everybody is responsible. Find a volunteer. Look for the sites where you might find some fires starting, even if there aren't any. What did you guys come up with? So we've got a three-step process. Like every good organization, when you have a problem to solve, we form a committee to solve it. <laughs> so we form a committee to solve the problem. Uh, we get people from different age groups. Uh, well, actually not really. From a certain age group, preferably the younger ones who are familiar with social media, presumably. Uh, uh, we will rely on volunteers. There's a step two. We rely on volunteers. We hope that people will do it out of the good of their hearts. In the worst case scenario, we arrow them. And finally, to implement it, we will use some kind of rostering because you have limited number of people, lots of social media avenues to listen to. So maybe Monday, one person will do it, Tuesday, another person will do it, and so on and so forth. So your three-step process, just repeat. Step one. Step one, form a committee. Step two, rely on volunteers. Step three, rostering. Okay, very useful. So far, so good. What was the question that you were answering, and what was the answer you came up with? Okay, the strategy I have is I start talking very long, so you snatch your mic back from me. <laughs> um, so we discuss. I should really do this. <laughs> um, so basically, we discuss and we feel that uh, we are, we are all from very lean marketing team. So basically, we are doing eyeball manual check. We're not using any tool. Um, we also depend a lot on uh, organization efforts, so it's kind of like collective effort that 
we count on other team or other uh, colleagues to let us know um, what we should be aware of in terms of a social media messaging or insights or whatsoever that they found on, on social media. Very good. So, manual check as opposed to a tool. Hui Kang, what was your topic? What did you come up with? Yeah, our topic was uh, um, basically uh, identify right, what are the key search words and areas of concerns, not just with relating to our own charity, but also the sector that we are in. Uh, we identify who are our peers right, so that we listen, uh, also listen into what's happening at their space. Right? And then we also identified what are some of the platforms that we want to do a search on. And in terms of listening, I think like what uh, uh, the other participants have mentioned, uh, certain relevant uh, sites and blogs and then uh, uh, keywords and hashtags. And perhaps even the names of your benefactors, your, your sponsors. On this table, you're still writing. Hmm. Um, basically, we are also... Uh, the, only, the only tools we know was uh, Google Alert. That's it. Um, um, I just did a double check again with my staff and see. <laughs> um, so anything that's free, any tools that's free, they use for, for now, uh, because there are some tools that require a subscription after a, a period of free, uh, free service. So that's something that is a struggle for charities like us. Yeah. So only, only Google use alerts. Yeah. Wow, what did you spend your five minutes on? Okay, that's okay. I'll forgive you. I thought you were all communicators. You're here to do social media, and yet nobody wants the microphone. Okay, uh, we will use uh, the tools we have selected, Facebook, Twitter, um, official website, Instagram, WhatsApp, and chat, uh, WeChat. Um, for the official website, we can include a feedback and a chat uh, uh, facility so that people can post their comments and uh, get replied from there. You know, a lot of times I see people have uh, a YouTube channel and they disallow comments. What does that say about transparency? Um, please allow comments on your YouTube. And by the way, if somebody posts a negative comment, don't delete it. As uh, Jeannie will gladly tell you in the telecommunications space, certain players have got themselves into trouble for doing that in the past. On this table. Well, I guess it depends on what platform or form that we're looking at, because some Platforms or forms, we have to make a good decision. Uh, sometimes it's just something that they talk about, and it's like uh, they have a shell life. It's uh, maybe yesterday's news; it'll blow over. So we have to make a good decision and uh, uh, on how to react, not to be reactive, but how the messaging and how would we uh, go about doing it. You know, don't be so uh, in a hurry to to respond. Take time to listen. Your thoughts on your topic and how you are going to advance the social media cause. This is not an exam, by the way. <laughs> how they end up with me? <laughs> yes. um, okay, I think our our question was: What can we do to sh join or shape the or influence the conversations? So we're saying that if it's a I mean, our team was thinking that if it's a positive uh, comment, we can actually um, like it and you know encourage. I mean, those comments. Uh, we also talked about planting people who will place likes and positive comments. But then the question of integrity came up for an organisation doing that. And if it's negative, um, we were saying we could create a new topic to distract them. <laughs> or, or if we are sure we're in the clear, if it's negative, we could actually question whether it's fake news. <laughs> Hashtag fake news. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Amusing. I'm not sure it'll work. That's the problem. What about on your table? Um, I, think, I think it's... Um, the idea is to actually develop a group of, um, a group of advocates, a believer of your, of your cause, or even a beneficiary of your cause to actually um, help um, shape and... Um, shape and steer your um, influence online as well. I mean, they are, they are the direct beneficiary and they could um, lend weight to whatever that you're promoting. Very useful. Uh, a group of advocates. W would you even bring in advocates who, as we heard from the other tables, posted negative comments? 
Do you think that would work? Sometimes it's better to have people inside the tent peeing out than outside the tent peeing in. So maybe there are some people who, who are critics, who, who can be won over. Okay, you're such a critic of our organization, but why don't you join the team and help improve things? Maybe that's the way to sell it to them. What did you come up with on your table? Me? Yes. All right. Okay. Hi, I'm Lynette from SWA. Our discussion topic was generally how to drive more traffic to the website. Uh, we talked about using the breaking news tags to link it back to your website or your portal. And then uh, Jeannie very kindly shared about using this um, Starhub communications discussion tag, which they have people discussing stuff and it could lead back the channel to whatever your website is to drive more traffic over your end. We spoke about using videos because they're usually tear jerkers. You get people interested. Um, they get emotionally drawn in to whatever courses that you're looking at. And to tack on with YouTube, these are the few discussions that we had for the last five minutes. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Uh, and all free consultancy. Patrick, who on your table is going to speak on the topic of content? Uh, we talked about using websites and uh, social media like Facebook and uh, posting stuff like events that we run. Uh, and we talked about uh, uh, getting interns to do interviews with the uh, stakeholders and to post those videos. Uh, yeah. That about sums up what we talked about. Right. So isn't this interesting? Earlier on, we heard from another table that you want to delegate the social media listening and social media to everybody in the organization. And you're saying delegate the production of content to everybody in the organization. Did I understand that right? Yeah. Sorry? yeah. I think the, the idea was <coughs> you don't always need to have slick videos. Um, heartwarming videos can be produced by all of us, you know, so uh, the example I gave was using interns um, with just their handphones going around interviewing our bus captains, and that worked very well for us on social media. Mm. Hui Kang, isn't this interesting? Do you remember in television how 10, 15 years ago, if you came back from an interview recording or a press conference and the audio was a bit shabby, for whatever reason there was a buzz on the line, as we like to say, or the lighting wasn't great, what would your editor say? Oh, wait, you were the editor. What would your VP say? Well, in those days, right, uh, there was a lot of emphasis on clarity and quality. You know, you expect your news bulletins to have clear videos. Yeah. And but today? I, and today, times have changed, right? We all want to see grainy, you know, grainy videos because then that's authentic, <laughs> right? That's, uh, that's something that's uh, uh, uploaded by, by the man in the street, you know, and, and not uh, something slick that's produced in-house. So, yes, yeah. you know, that would be something that would work. Did you catch that word? Authentic. That's the secret ingredient. And isn't it an irony that there are so many people who watch anything from plane landings through to Russian car crash videos because they actually happened. And yet the stuff that people spend thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars producing, ah, oh, well, it's just an ad. So maybe one of the things that you need to overcome is this fear that, you know, what we'll produce is not going to look good. Keep it real and chances are you'll find an automatic audience. Now, on this table, I think you were talking about hits, getting more hits. What did you come up with? Um, well, we talked about how um, it's actually easier to get news distributed through social media if it's bad news as opposed to good news. So uh, one way was to leverage on any possible scandals um, and try to turn the message around so that it's more positive. Um, and uh, another suggestion we had was to um, get the team involved. So if you have a um, tweet or a post that you'd like to share, you can get some of your staff to redistribute it and perhaps add on their comments. Uh, that way the distribution network is a little bit more varied and you get an endorsement in-house, which is a little, also a little bit more, like you said, authentic. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Just two more tables to go. I hope you're finding this exercise useful. It's better than being talked at. These guys, you're actually doing it yourselves. Your topic. Please stand up and face the camera. It's right there. Hi. Hi, I'm Joyce. I'm actually the only uh, charity in this, thank you, in this whole table. What's our question? <laughs> oh, on content. Um, for us, we do have a dedicated social media team, uh, thankfully. Um, we have someone, we hired an intern uh, that looks at um, 
uh, all the various traditional and social media channels a few times a day just to scan through um, where we are, so on and so forth. Um, and uh, we do have a digital media person. She is younger than, she's about 25, 28. That, yeah, she's good. Uh, some of the things I learned from her was, um, so for example, the posts have to be authentic. They have to be on causes. They have to, most of the time, be a real story with a real face. That's charity, uh, which relates to your Russian car crash, because it's real. Um, Keep it short, videos shouldn't be longer than 30 seconds, and so on and so forth. Even if it's talking about your history or whatever, keep it brief, uh, talk the main points, because on social media, people's attention span are really very short. Um, if it's on an event that is fun, then we have to bring out the fun element, and on Instagram, it's slightly different, so what they will do will be Instagrammable photos. So for example, I was just telling my table if it's, uh, I don't know, a fundraising where people sell burgers, the burger must look really good, and so on and so forth. Um, and so that's how we drive the content, yeah. So basically, um, the trends and um, um, both a mixture of uh, what is appealing and what is real and what you stand for, yeah. Uh, Patrick, can I get you to jump in on this point on authenticity for a moment? As well as maybe we can talk a little bit about reverse mentorships. Let's start with authenticity. Patrick, when it comes to dealing with some of the issues which SMRT has had to deal with for the last year, uh, two years, uh, uh, five years, um, or is it six? Um, to what extent has that authenticity been important in persuading commuters that actually you are working as hard as you can on the track upgrading and the, the signaling issues and all of that sort of stuff? Well, there's no other choice. It has to be authentic and you need to be transparent. Um, but when you're trying to do so many different things at the same time, um, and you will in a, invariably, inevitably inconvenience commuters, authenticity may not be a premium at the end of the day, but it's still very important that we are as transparent and as timely as possible. The other thing that we do do is that, because we understand commuters are inconvenienced, even though we're trying to push forward all of these renewal and upgrade programs as quickly as possible. Um, what for us is important is looking at perception gaps out there in social media and in traditional media. So although I don't go out there and defend myself in every single platform, because sometimes it's no point doing it in a toxic site. There's already a, a predisposition, okay? But you need to be very clear about what are the issues that are being brought up whether there are perception gaps, whether there are issues with accuracy, then you address them in your own spaces. And as I said, we don't have an active advocacy, but we have a quiet staff advocacy going on uh, when they feel compelled to, to respond. So authenticity, yes, but uh, <clears throat> depending on the climate that, uh, and the environment that you're dealing with, Perhaps the other thing that you can do to support uh, authentic, transparent, timely stories is to address perception gaps. Perception gaps meaning they got it wrong. People, people are saying stuff that's not true. Is that what you mean by yeah. perception gaps? So um, there may be a lot of inaccuracies, inaccuracies out there, or it's, they may not have got it 100%. Um, that 70 80% that they have got right somehow is diminished by the 20-30% that they got wrong. That's perfectly fine because there's no such thing as perfect communications. Eh? So we just need to try hard to address these perception gaps in, in different channels and on different platforms. Hui Kang, from your SME clients, how difficult is transparency? Um, there's uh, different considerations, right? So for transparency, um, you have to take into consideration a few factors. First, um, uh, uh, how, how much to disclose? How much can you share? Right? And uh, uh, you know, uh, there are several con business considerations, for example, that you might feel that you don't want your competitors to know. Or there are certain sensitive information that you feel you shouldn't be sharing with uh, the outsiders. Right? So that's, that's one key consideration. But when you say how much you can share, What's the bet? Most people in this room thought, I don't want to share anything but the good news. Transparency, in Patrick's case, is really about the bad news. 
And transparency is actually really hard, isn't it? How do you overcome that, that uh, laying bare of, of yourself? And earlier on, we had the question, you know, how much can we actually say? How much are we allowed to say? What do you tell your clients about overcoming the desire not to share anything except for the good news and, and where to draw the line between what you can and can't say? Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, right, uh, you need to understand, you know, uh, especially when a crisis happens, right, uh, it, it's going to be out there, you know, whether or not you like it or not. So you might not want to share details of what happened, but at the end of the day, if, if that's something that we know that's going to be out there in time, then it's better to come up up front, you know, with the facts and your stand uh, uh, as soon as possible so that you have the first chance, the first bite of the cherry, to share your perspective before someone else comes up with a coloured or another perspective that would be, you know, uh, uh, from the wrong, not quite wrong, but another perspective. And there you have that perception gap that Patrick talks about. So lead the agenda. Drive the conversation. Don't react to it. And I think that was a, an earlier comment on another table. Jeannie, let's talk about reverse mentorships because so far what we heard on the first tables was hire somebody who's 15 or so, who's going to ma manage the social media for you. If you have somebody who is, you know, like uh, we heard earlier on from Joyce, 25, 28, 28, it's impolite to ask, isn't it? But, you know, um, if you have somebody who's young and capable, do you then put them in front of Tan Tong Hai or any of your other senior executives so that that information flows up towards the ones who are considered too old to do social media? Similarly, uh, Patrick at SMRT, you're the face of SMRT these days. How much upward mentorship are you doing of the senior executives about social media? Uh, have first. you know that all of us are very young and start up? Okay. Uh, no, uh, I wanted to give one more tip. What we do in Starhub, we have this hashtag called working at Starhub. So all staff are encouraged to put photograph and everything else and then hashtag it as working at Starhub. So there's this page whereby, you know, when you, I mean, for those of you who are familiar with hashtag, so when you just go to hashtag working at Starhub, you'll see all the photographs of all the crazy things that we have done as a company, okay? So that creates community. That also makes sure that the senior management team, all of us, including board of directors, you know, try and get ourselves involved in as well. Because we were saying that um, even though we jokingly say that social media, social listening team and all that, you should hire somebody who live, breathe, eat, sleep social media. But the truth is all of us, you know, yourself included, Mark, um, you know, when you become a dad or when you become a grandfather, you have to interact with your younger generation. And the way to go really is to keep up with technology, keep up with all the social media. So um, working at, at Starhub is, uh, hashtag working at Starhub is something that we coin for ourselves. You can also do that for your own uh, company uh, so that you can also encourage regardless of uh, what rank, what file, and uh, regardless of age you know, of, of, your, of, of your employees in your company to embrace social media. So uh, working at a WWA type of hashtag, and then what, what sort of photos, and does somebody have to censor, sorry, uh, approve the photos before they're posted, or uh, okay. how do you now, deal with the risk now, of people the, posting the, uh, the, birthday the, party photos? The, so. the other thing that you need to take note of is when you want to play at a social media, you have to play by the rules, okay? Just like when you play football, you play by the rules, right? So don't be caught offside, don't be caught, you know, yellow card and red card and all that. So you need to have a proper process in place in your company. There are do's and don'ts for social media. Um, just now I was telling my team here that we do have what we call the startup community page where we actually tap on the wisdom of the masses out there to help us answer queries. So I give an example. If let's say somebody were to write in and say, when will iPhone 10 be available? Okay, there's no need for us to waste customer service hotline you know, call to answer that question. There's no need for us to get people to really answer that because the community itself, and that community is more than 40,000 members, will help to answer and say, oh, you didn't read, it's, 4th of, it's 3rd of November, for example. So that helps the company save costs as well, and that helps to grow the community, and then that's where loyalty is born as well from this group of customers who will be our ambassador and our advocates out there. So, so tap on all this, and then have a proper process whereby your social listening team, for example, when they listen to negative stuff about a the company, they may not 
you know, they may, while they answer some of the questions, if there are certain parts, like Patrick said, that are too toxic already, they may need to refer them to the corporate comms department so that the, the company's corporate messaging is there. Okay? And then staff who are passionate about the company, uh, especially the network guys, whenever we have network outage, and they have this tendency to want to reply, but they know they have to hold back and let the professionals take care of things, so to speak. Okay, so there must be proper guidelines given to your staff what can, say, what, what can be said, what cannot be said. And because in us, it's already ingrained, so our people know that whatever photo they post, it cannot be obscene or you know, um, things that you will not put it up uh, for, for, for elderly to see, for example. So there, there is a silent code of practice within our company itself, what can be posted, what cannot be posted, what can be said. And uh, we're, we're quite lenient to a certain extent, and because it is done in a playful, tongue-in-the-cheek manner, so yeah, more often than not, it gets away. Okay, and can you now actually answer my question about uh, reverse mentoring your senior executives? Yeah. So, for example, do, do you or does, does your team of 10 present to the senior leadership team about how to do their own work at StarHub type tweets? Yes, yep. we, we, we actually conduct lessons, tutors, tutorials, lessons for them. They go to the Curiosity Lab, they learn what are the things that you know, we are listening to, and then they participate. We help them set up LinkedIn pages, uh, uh, Instagram account, uh, Twitter account, Facebook account, if they don't have. Most people would already have Facebook account, but the rest of the social media, yeah. Okay, so uh, Joyce, maybe that 28-year-old intern you hired could become a tutor, sorry? Okay, full-time and intern, maybe they can start to teach other people and then you do have that internal team. I didn't come to this table, but not because I haven't forgotten you. It's because we had so many other things to talk about. And you guys were talking about content creation. What did you come up with? Um, I think a lot of it has been mentioned by the other tables, but um, for my organization, we started meddling with live feeds on our programs when we were conducting it. and. Um, especially with volunteers involved, the volunteers started sharing and that's where we started getting more people to like our page and also more awareness for us. And at the same time, um, I think when um, other corporate volunteers were actually Googling, um, some of our content came out and then we started getting more leads from corporate volunteers. Uh, so that's how we grew our, our volu corporate volunteer database. Yes. Interesting. Keep going. Are you with a charity or a corporate? What, what is the name of your charity? YWCA. And YWCA, what, what sort of things did you live feed? I mean, was it, did you have to wait until the annual charity dinner or, or what, what sort of events did you do? So uh, we did two live feeds um, as a test. So one was actually a Father's Day um, senior activity for the uh, fathers that we were supporting. And so we brought all these um, old uncles and daddies in and then we ran some programs. So that actually got um, a lot of um, positive feedback. The other program that we ran was we actually had a group of 70 volunteers from Singapore Armed Forces to bake for our beneficiaries. So the boys started um, liking it and everything, and so the, the reach went out. And um, because of that, we had a lot of other corporates started calling us, asking us whether could we conduct the same kind of um, CSR for them. Yeah. Okay. And then how long were these live feeds, and what sort of equipment or, or cost did you have? Um, my staff actually just used her handphone and then just uh, posted it live. So it was like maybe for a minute or so. So it's not too long. Um, but the only problem is once if you delete it, you can't keep the video on Facebook, basically. So it was actually a um, Facebook live feed. Um, but then um, after sp speaking to the team here, one of them suggested that maybe you can have another staff to do another video and then upload it later. So that was actually another good suggestion. But then, we're, like all charities, we have uh, limited resources, basically, yeah. There are, of course, a, a lot of uh, options available beyond Facebook Live. It's easy and cheap because you all have a handphone. I dare say most of you are on Facebook, and so a Facebook Live stream is quite straightforward. But you can also use YouTube Live, which is also freely available and, and, and cost-effective. There are any number of conference service providers who will charge you money, uh, but there are also Instagram is, uh, is, is another one, Vine. There are so many options. Just give it a try. Um, can I also offer another thought on, on the live streaming? Um, you know, when you come from live television, nothing really phases you, right? Weekend, 
live TV, it's, you know, there's, uh, the, the, you, you overcome any sort of uh, concerns or, or shyness you might have about being on camera. What we've observed so far, as I've gone around the room and handed the microphone to you, is quite the opposite of that. And what I'd like to encourage you to do is to, one, get over it. You look fine, you sound fine, you don't have to worry about what people think. Two, experiment. I love the idea of a one minute video of the Bake Off or whatever it happened to be, right? Whatever event. Just do it for one minute. You can count it. Time yourself. Have somebody else do it. Time it. And what's the bet? The world will not go down. The sun will rise the next day. Nothing critically d important will happen unless you happen to be filming, you know, presidential election or something like that using a mobile phone. In other words, it is actually very low risk even though it's live. Because the chances of you collecting millions of viewers is actually relatively small. You will be surprised the first time you do it about how little impact you've had. And that's a good thing. Because then you'll think, this isn't so bad. We'll do it again. How many times have you done yours? We did it twice, and so far it has yielded quite good results, actually. Yeah. Quite good results. So it doesn't have to be too complicated. It can be cheap. You've obviously overcome any sort of giggles about being on camera, right? And now you're willing to try more, and that's really the point that you need to get to. You'll never get to a stage where you'll reach those audiences if you don't take the first step, and you obviously have. There's another very important part of this whole content creation conversation that I'd like to also again bring our panelists into. And that is what defines content. We already talked about authenticity, so you don't necessarily need to stage something. But how many of you have actually leveraged an event that you are already having for generating social media content? So you've not actually gone and done something new and separate and you've hired a video crew or you've engaged a writer, but in the ordinary course of business, that you found you're generating content. Please raise your hands if you've done that. Right, Patrick, tell us about it. What did you do? What, what does the ordinary course of business mean in terms of content generation for you? Um, <clears throat> we live many lives or different lives in SMRT, so, um, and so we take different snapshots. So one of the things is just following someone who is uh, working hard behind the scenes 24-7. So it, you don't create a scene, uh, you don't create a movie, you just follow the person's life. You know? And uh, this has uh, brought us uh, a number of fans who do appreciate that a lot of people in SMRT, the 10,500 of us, are, whether you're on trains, buses or taxis, working hard. Okay? And it's all about frontline public customer service. <clears throat> um, the other thing that we try and do is, uh, again, trying to keep it authentic and not put a spin to it, is how that person's work, let's say from 1.30 to 4.30 in the morning, is helping you the next day as you take your bus or train. Because those are the only hours we have to get everything up and running again. So. It's about the, the, the person working hard. It's about what the person is contributing to your journey the next day. And the third, in a sense, uh, <laughs> snapshot that we do take without creating the hype or going to extra effort to create the media is about the CSR work that we do. <clears throat> so we, all, we are focused about mobility. So we built a mobility park with Jurong Hospital we built three inclusive playgrounds. Inclusive playgrounds are actually very interesting. They allow kids with uh, disabilities to play with other kids and intergenerational playgrounds as well. So it's all about mobility. And again, it's just about being there at the playground and just taking out your phone. As I said, you don't create the event. The event just plays itself out. You're just capturing it and putting it out there. Not necessarily with any narrative, but just to keep it real. So those are a few examples that we have. And, and Jeannie, I guess that comes back to your working at StarHub hashtag. People aren't actually doing anything different. They're going about their ordinary course of business, but they're just taking photos. Where are they then posting it? Yeah, so, the, so they were just hashtag working at StarHub when they post it up. 
But the other thing that I want to talk about apart from stuff is um, you, you mentioned about content. We, all, we have this always on content that we use to push and to educate, inform and entertain our customers. So for example, we have no lack of content because we are a pay TV operator. So we will use, for example, we'll repackage, for example, some of the um, uh, TVB series, for example, the Unholy Alliance, Tongmen, for those who are aware of this. So we, we, we repackage it and then put it as a post on Instagram. So it makes it you know, uh, more fun for people to download and watch it, for example. So um, yeah, I'm probably the last person to answer this question because I have a lot of content. <laughs> okay. But, but for, for charities, you, you can produce a lot of content as well, um, like um, Lynette said earlier on. You know, you can do a lot of video, tear jerkers and all that uh, to help you to get increase more hits to your web pages and all that. The only thing which unfortunately is Facebook. In the past, you can depend on Facebook, you know, on the news feed. But now they, they only give priority to sponsored posts. Because Facebook has also gone, you know, to monetize their thing. So it, it I, I mean, I, I, I can empathize with the charity. If you don't pay, it's going to be very tough for you to get your, to get more hits, really. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick, you're an advocate of uh, search engine optimization, so that you don't have to pay. Oh, you still do have to pay, but, uh, but maybe I'll just take off from your point. Uh, Social media requires some specialization. That's the reason why I don't call myself a social media expert. I have, where's Jean? Jean is my social media expert. She, obviously, she's younger than I am. Okay, but <laughs> there are certain intricacies that, to social media that you must know. So, for example, when I want to broadcast and get to as many people as possible, I use Twitter. I don't use Facebook. Okay? Facebook if you don't already know, <coughs> if you have 100,000 or 1 million followers, when you do post, uh, you only get to less than 1% of them. Okay? It's a very simple business model. You pay to boost, you pay to reach. Okay? So Facebook doesn't get you the kind of uh, numbers. Huh? So you have, when you choose your platform, you need to know the strengths and weaknesses of every single platform. So that's where someone with that kind of specialization can help. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that you need to know, okay, is search engine optimization. So if you want yourself or especially your charity to present itself well, when someone Googles for your charity, uh, search engine optimization, which is a very highly technical skill, is something that you might want to pick up or speak to someone who knows about it. Okay? Because the way your website is put together, and these are actually very simple rules, uh, um, Google penalizes websites that are badly built. Okay? So if your page loading speed is lousy, if you've got broken links, your images are not optimized, you'll be penalized. Okay, so make sure all the simple things are done properly when you put up your website. Okay, and follow Google, Google's algo changes. Uh, they change the algorithms almost every month or, in fact, more often than that. And they change algos often to make sure that they are pro-search and, well, not, well, I won't say anti-SEO, but they make it more pro-search. So companies, now even charities need to make sure that they're on top of their game. So that they don't game the system, I guess that's the point, right? Precisely. So there's some sort of specialization required. Just make sure one person in a team knows how that's done. Okay. Uh, you referred to Jean already, who incidentally has been taking photos of you during the session. I'd like you once again to just reach out for your phone. Go to twitter.com or start your Twitter app and key in the search term that is the hashtag S-I-A-S, -S, right, as in the logo in the top right corner, S-I-A-S. -S. Just uh, quickly go to Twitter or a web page, twitter.com, and the hashtag that you are searching for is S-I-A-S. -S. What do you see? You see a photo I just took of Patrick. 
because Jean, for whatever reason, isn't taking photos of Patrick. But scroll down, and this is the point. Thank you, Jackie God, for following me. Um, scroll down, and what you will see is Olam International. Congratulations to all winners at the SIAS 18th Investors Choice Awards, which we hosted on Tuesday night. Further down, another photo of, from Olam International showing that it was the winner of the Consumer Staples category in the Singapore Corporate Governance Awards. Scroll down further, Black Sun. Black Sun's team in Singapore at the SIAS Corporate Governance Conference with a photo. And another photo further down of Sally Pilot from Black Sun being interviewed on the panel. And then there's more from Olam. Can you see the point that I'm driving at? It's not their conference. But the fact that their guests, their spokespeople are at the event talking, appearing on a panel, they're making social media mileage out of that for free. So earlier on, Joyce, I hate to keep referring to you, but you also talked about events and generating content at events. Well, this is an event. How many of you are generating content today? Good. It's just being authentic. Okay, so you've got so many opportunities to post content. And so what I'm hoping that this conversation has generated for you so far is the realization that social media is something that you do all the time and therefore you don't have to stop whatever else you have to do because heaven knows charities are understaffed and under-resourced. You've already got so much on your plates. You can do social media in parallel to what you're already doing. The marathons that you're staging, the charity fundraisers, the, the booths in, in Orchard Road or however you raise your money, you can already leverage all of those without having to go through additional expense and whatever else. Quick word on content accelerators. Hui Kang, would you like to talk about Outbrain, Dianomi, and Tabula, and all of those content accelerators? Or maybe Genie, would you like to chime in on that? Okay, get off Twitter now. You've got to pay attention to the conference again. Get off Twitter, unless you're going to take a photo of me and hashtag it. How do you use content accelerators? Have you used them before for your clients? No? Do you use content accelerators, Genie? Okay, I'm going to take your phone away. Uh, so content accelerators are paid for platforms where you upload a, a link, maybe a photo, and then you pay a fee for that content to appear on websites outside of your domain, beyond your Facebook page, YouTube handle, and whatever else. Um, budgets start from $1, so it's very manageable, and you get to access sites which ordinarily you could never, ever get your content on. Costs money, that's the only problem. Have you used content accelerators before, content promoters? Worthwhile exploring. Yes, what, what's your experience been with it? Well, we recently completed a video, um, and um, the company that produced a video for us helped us um, you know, spread the video, and I have to admit, it would have uh, it certainly garnered more reaches and comments, and we had comments from beneficiaries that we had helped before, so I think it, it was uh, indeed a very valuable exercise for us. I think we had, um, well, we just launched it several weeks ago, so it was a few thousand, which, you know, is a great boost for us anyway. Well, I don't know the exact details, but that was part of the package. So basically what uh, we worked with the production company that through part of the CSR, they would produce a video and package in, you know, the, the, the content acceleration for us. A few thousand hits. Does that sound attractive? Sound appealing? For charity? Uh, well, let me tell you how much it costs. It's about 40 cents per view. It's about right, 40 cents. You can actually control the bidding yourself. So you can bid a dollar if you really want, but then you pay more for the same click. So think about it. This, the conversation with content promotion sites does not start with how much money do I need to spend. You start with how many hits do I want? And then you multiply that by 40 cents, and that's the amount of money you need to spend. It's a very simple equation. Now, people generally don't want to spend money on distribution because they say, well, I, I, I want to produce something that will go viral without me having to spend money on it. Jeannie, let me ask you, how scary is viral for you? Patrick, do you really want stuff to go viral? Yeah? No, certainly, if it's my content, yes, I want it to go viral very quickly. Yes. He's referring to crisis for you. Yes. 
That, so you see, that's the thing. A lot of people say, oh, I want my content to go viral. They even go to video production companies like mine and say, oh, can you produce a viral video? <laughs> Let me ask you, how many people here enjoy having the flu? Uh, you know, the fact is that when something goes viral, by definition, it's beyond your control. So, please, la, don't ask for viral stuff, okay? I'll hand you a, a handkerchief if you do. Um, but content promotion sites, again, it's within your control and the budgets. Yeah, sorry, if I'll hit on that point on, on uh, virality or virality. Uh, what's viral is also very subjective. <clears throat> when you talk to my chairman or my CEO, you get two comments and it's already become viral. You know? So there is a threshold for what's viral. People in social media, okay, perhaps because they're in social media, they've got very low thresholds. People who are not in social media, who are generally in management and, and, uh, and boards, and of course, they're all PR experts, they've got very high thresholds, okay? So vir virality is something that's very subjective and which we all have to manage, uh, I think, quite carefully <laughs> because it's very, very subjective. But it helps, uh, uh, and I've spent, been spending a lot of effort doing this, metrics, okay? So whether it's for traditional media, uh, like tonality, share of voice, or for social media, metrics is actually going to be very, very important. So when you put out a video, uh, your reach, your views, your likes, your shares, your comments, all tell you very different things, okay? And that's for organic, and when you boost, your cost per click, your cost per thousand impressions also tell you many different things because it tells you whether your effort is worth it, you know. Uh, and many of these things don't cost money. In fact, Facebook Analytics, uh, I actually wrote this down. Facebook Analytics uh, actually tells you a lot of things that may be very, very useful for you. Uh, just let me give you a few examples. And this is from SMRT's Facebook Analytics. Uh. For example, you can tell me, of course, the, the basic thing is increase in Facebook fans, but it can also tell me over any period in time, the increase in positive comments about the brand, decrease in negative comments about the brand, increase in engagement rates on Facebook, increase in netizens correcting other netizens, okay, and higher Facebook engagement rates versus my competitor, let's say SPS Transit. So, Look at metrics because, and I'm, I've got a fetish uh, for metrics, uh, because they can tell you a lot of things about how well you're doing with your branding efforts. Sorry that it took a bit too long. No, it's, it's very worthwhile, and it takes me really to the final topic that we wanted to address today, and that is, how do you measure the success? We can. When you talk to your clients, your clients come to you and say, yes, we want a PR campaign, we want to be on social, and then they say, can you get me lots of hits? Talk, to, talk us through what is reasonable in terms of metrics. So, of course, there's uh, always what we call qualitative and quantitative, right? So, quantitative is simple. It's number of uh, 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 hits, you know, uh, number of views. Uh, uh, in terms of our trade, it's number of uh, media articles, you know, with a mention of a name. Then, quantitative, you know, that is the other thing where we look for where is, is it the type of uh, 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 coverage that you are looking for? Right, uh, as uh, uh, Patrick has pointed out, you know the performance matrix. Right, is it positive? Is it negative? Uh, uh, and and that's the that's the challenge, right? That comes because you know uh, it's it's almost impossible to have something that's wildly positive, right? And uh, there's always uh, uh, a management of expectations in terms of uh, the type of uh, coverage and the reach uh, that you would want to be able to achieve. Jeannie, how do you measure? Again, I go back to my social analytic labs that we have called Curiosity. We, um, that platform actually allows us to track competitors as well as the top 10 most mentioned um, brands or what have you, or companies. So uh, we, we actually showcase this to ministers and VIPs who visit our Curiosity labs. And they're all amazed that we're not only tracking ourselves, our competitors, but also the top 10 in Singapore and uh, worldwide as well, so that we know uh, what are the sentiments as well. Um, can't go into details on what we do because that is our business yeah, of tracking. Yes, and, and our colleagues here from Singtel would be uh, very interested to... Yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Uh, but actually, please, please remain standing because obviously one of the things that, uh, that we do also see from time to time, and you, you would have seen a year or two ago in the telco sector, 
was um, a very large Singapore telco, which wasn't Starhub, uh, engaging a social pleasure. media um, company, which then ended up posting negative things about uh, other players. Can you just give us some color on what charities need to know when they engage an agency external because they can't afford uh, to hire 28-year-olds to do it internally? Uh, what sort of questions ought you ask a social media agency in order to ensure that you don't end up with, uh, you know, in the news for the wrong reasons? Actually, I do not advocate hiring agency. In Starhub ourselves also, when we first started life, of course, none of us are expert in this, so we've got um, agencies to help us. Um, but then later on, we terminated and we, we brought it in-house because we feel that in-house is better. They know the business. They can respond faster. So our, our team are all in-house. Uh, so my advice would be, seriously, you know, if you can, build a team. Even if it's just one, two person, just build the team. Don't hire agency. Good. Sorry, Viking. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> all right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's almost 10 to 4. And uh, the time has come for you to do one more exercise and to ask your questions. Now, this exercise is considerably easier than the previous one. I'm going to give you three minutes. And in that time, I want you to, just on your own, or maybe with your, in your small teams, I want you to discuss what you are going to do based on the conversation that you've had today. So, in other words, you didn't just come away from this conference listening to us and uh, coming away with some ideas which you might forget about by the time dinner rolls around, but that you've actually walked out of here at 4.30 with an action plan. So in the next three minutes, think about the things that we've heard from all the tables, about delegating to everybody in the organization or hiring just one or two, about the social listening platforms that you might use, the sorts of content that you might create, events that you might live webcast, channels for distribution that you might leverage. So you have three minutes, as I say, you can chat amongst yourselves, you can take some notes on your own sheet of paper, and then in three minutes from now, I'd like you to come back and uh, come back with any questions that have arisen as a result of you doing this exercise. And no, you can't leave early. Okay, your three minutes. We, we have the Q&A immediately afterwards. Your three minutes starts now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, shortly before 4. We have until 4.30, but we don't have to be here until 4.30. Besides, we've passed the threshold after which the 75% is up. Um, but now I'd like to hear from a, a couple of you about what you plan to do straight away. That is in the next uh, 48 hours or perhaps by the end of next week. And also, if you have any questions that came up as a result of the conversations around your table, now is the time to raise them. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, pay our attention over here to Hui Kang's table. Who are we going to hear from at your table? Hi. Um, what I was thinking back from here is uh, I heard about the content accelerator. Uh, it's quite interesting. So, um, what I will do is, uh, I will discuss with my young youth, which is uh, 25 years old, to, to look into this content accelerator. And uh, of course, uh, I think in, in just now we discussed, uh, we must know who are our audience. So, we have to reach the, the right groups of audience uh, on, in terms of content accelerator. So, that uh, I hope that I can reach at least 1,000 hits, like the other, the other one said. That's all. Very good. Thank you. Please give him a big hand. Over at this table, we also have some very active conversation going on. What did you guys come up with? What's your plan? No, it's Capital Land. Capital Land. One of the biggest charities in town. Um, what's, what's your social media plan from here? What did you pick up from today? Um, actually, we were, just more we were discussing more about um, a closer collaboration between a brand and um, the charities in publicizing themselves you know, on social. Yeah, because I think there's always a challenge. I mean, as a, as a foundation, we are very supportive, but there's always restriction about publicizing the people, the beneficiaries that we're supporting. So how do you balance, to yeah, to protect them as well, but still getting that message out there? Uh, we're still, 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, we were sharing about our restrictions as um, social service organisations uh, in social media, right? Because we, in our photos and our videos, we can't show the faces of our beneficiaries. So it's always the back view. So we would like to know um, how we can make it more um, meaningful, more interactive, more engaging if we are just always showing the back view of our beneficiaries. Yeah. No, we haven't had time to go there yet. Yeah. All right. So they, at least they've identified the problem. Please give them a hand. A actually, Mark, actually, Mark, I was going to ask a question to, because there are a few PR consultants in this room, professional PR consultants. Uh, Pat and I are in-house, so I really wanted to ask them because it, at this table itself, we have a few people here who really cannot show the faces of the boys in a boys' town, for example, and I think for you as well. So h how do you then, I mean, you can't produce video, you can't take photograph, so you can't even try to you know, get brownie points by putting them and upload them onto YouTube or anything. So how do you then help these charities? I think uh, one, uh, one key area would be the experience of the volunteers that work with uh, uh, you or the staff, right? I'm sure uh, while we can't show uh, photos or faces of, uh, uh, you know, the children and all that, I think your, your volunteers or your staff who work with them on a daily basis will probably have stories to tell, right? Interesting stories and experiences that they can share. I think uh, that's probably one uh, area that uh, you can look into, right? Then um, there are, of course, activities. Uh, and I know, of course, you can't show faces. So uh, ha uh, having uh, people who take videos or photos to be sensitive right, is important. You can take white shots you know, where uh, faces are not seen uh, 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 clearly. Right? So that could be something that you could um, experiment you know, and see how that works. But I think um, definitely if the direct uh, 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 the beneficiaries can't be shown, then definitely uh, the volunteers and the staff uh, their experiences are, are worth uh, sharing and highlighting. Good. I hope that's answered uh, the question. At least halfway. I guess there's, there's no... Wouldn't it be ideal if you could just show the beneficiaries? So, in seeing that you can't, what are you left with? I suppose that's the, that's the point. What did you come up with at this table? Oh, I think for us is to push up more stories. Um, regarding uh, regarding um, what she mentioned just now, uh, what we usually do is we get the consent of the beneficiaries, and uh, uh, usually because they are being helped, they are grateful, and some of them will step forward. Yeah. Consent. Any other questions arise for you that you'd like us to address? Now is also the time to say so. Any other clarifications that you need? Sorry. Yes, I didn't put on my glasses, so I misread the number of hits. So it's a few hundreds, not a few thousands. But a few hundreds to a charity is still is good. Yes, and I think what, what I personally took away was that, um, yes, I think those of us in the charity sector, we face a lot of restrictions. But the main thing is, I think, to keep an open mind. Look at different ways of doing things. I think that's what, what I took away the most. Thank you. By the way, the only way, the only thing that you need to get from a few hundred to a few thousand hits is more money. I don't know. It's... <laughs> 40 cents a hit. It's pretty, it's almost uh, mechanical. Pay 40 cents and get, get a hit. Yeah. Um, question actually for uh, Jeannie from Starhub. Oh, my chair. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, um, on behalf of the charities here, would there be any possibility for some, I don't know, pro bono or help from Starhub? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't take care of social media, actually, but I'm just asking, because you guys are giant, you have all the data, how can you help us, you know, and, and would there be any help? And I'll get your name card after that. <laughs> I'm asking for all the charities. <laughs> actually, um, in Starhub, I take care of um, um, community relations as well, and uh, a friend here from Boys Town will be able to vouch for me that we do do a lot, okay, and I think NCSS and uh, MC... See why we also vouch that we do a lot. Um, every year we have X million of dollars that we do use to help the uh, less fortunate. Uh, but I think giving cash and helping, it's always the easiest. But that's not something that we like to do, okay? What we would like to do is to do more things that, you know, money cannot buy type, okay? 
Um, so we, we, we encourage our staff to volunteer, to help us, to, to help and um, volunteer in those events that we organise. Uh, we also try to see what other things we can do apart from just giving cash. Yeah. But, uh, Let's hear it for StarHub. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions, comments, concerns? Yes, but you haven't addressed XYZ. Please speak up now rather than write it in your feedback form. Are there any other points that we should address? If not, then I'll invite our three panelists to give their final comments, final takeaways, but you can't leave yet, and it's not about the feedback form. We have to take a group photo. <laughs> and by the way, not just the people collecting tokens, all of us. So, uh, Hui Kang, let's start with your final comments, takeaways for today. Uh, we talked a lot about how social media should be managed by um, uh, our younger colleagues, right? 20-odd 20, 20 years old. Um, I think at the same time, something that uh, we also need to take into consideration, right? Uh, that uh, uh, it's, it's an it's a entire team effort, you know? So all of us need to be involved in some of, form of the other. And while our younger uh, colleagues are very much in tune with uh, social media trends, I think sometimes uh, 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 all of your experience you know, in understanding the sensitivities that each of your, your charity and your sector face is important. For example, not showing faces, you know, uh, of uh, some of our beneficiaries is a clear example. So while we, are, we will be happy to involve all our younger colleagues, you know, in uh, social media, I think that there must be some form of uh, 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 guidance and oversight on some of these sensitivities, right? Because we don't want uh, some of it uh, to, to go against us, you know. I was just having a word with uh, <coughs> the, the good folks at my table. Uh, we do a fair bit of uh, pro bono work with the uh, universities. So with SMU, NTU, and NUS, um, we provide industry perspectives, and I personally teach their uh, social media, together, of course, with Gene uh, programs. Um, I would like to offer this to <coughs> um, <coughs> the charities as well. We have seven adopted charities. Uh, we have a very active CSR program uh, similar to StarHub. Um, but I want to do something a bit different, which is where I could work with you on uh, how could we help you, uh, how could we help empower you in terms of uh, being better able to perform within, in social media. Okay? So if you see any examples that you like of SMRT or where we can get an opportunity to work with you to produce Let's say this is even a video, I'll, and I get interns coming my way. It's not just about the interns having a relationship with SMRT, but with our partners outside of the organization as well. So please, I can be reached on LinkedIn, um, or you can come to me. I, I should have enough cards to give you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Patrick Nathan from SMRT. And Jeannie Ong has the last word. I actually empathize with uh, a lot of you here because with limited resources and um, stricter corporate governance and all that, it's actually very tough for all of you. But I would say embrace social media because it is here to stay, whether you liked it or not. Start small, okay? Start small. Even if it's just one or two people, just start it and then um, partner. Okay, partnership is very important because like Boys Town, for example, when they partner with us, when we publicize about the event, we also help to create awareness for the Boys Town, for example. So when you cannot, when you are constrained by all the resources that you have, leverage on, a, on the partners and hopefully that can help you leapfrog into better things for you. Thank you very much, Jeannie Ong. Please join me in thanking all of our guests. Jeannie Ong, Patrick Nathan and Chia Hui Kang. <laughs>